is this is a bracelet that uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas um, has has been selling back home. I want to give it to you, and I because I want this to be the last one of these that we ever good, have to have. Good. And if we can do if we can do universal background checks and ban bump stocks and increase the age to 21 and get rid of the Dickey Amendment and do it now mm -hmm. and show the American people and my constituents, the people in Parkland, the grieving families and the students that we're actually ready to act. They'll feel better, and you can get this done, Mr. President. I want thank to you. give that okay, to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That was Congressman Ted Deutsch during a meeting last week with President Trump. A nice moment, and, and you know, when you're sitting with the president at times like that, he comes across very sincere that he actually is engaged in this issue. Uh, look, he, the president said a lot of the things that we would we would want anyone to say. The question is where it goes from here. I wasn't in the meeting about DACA, um, but I watched it and I acknowledge that it looked a lot like the meeting that we had. And then we know what happened next, and we know we're still struggling to uh, to push forward. So, will Congress next. pass something? You think? I think that Congress, I actually think that, that Congress will have to, here's what's going to happen. Um, it's now the beginning of March. On March 24th, there will be millions of people in Washington and around the country marching uh, for, for gun violence prevention. And that's really been what has been so different about this is the role that the students have played. You, you know, I thought there was a time after Sandy Hook, I thought the, the, the slaughtering of 20 first graders right. would have that impact. And then, then I even thought that, you know, if you shoot up churches or you shoot up country music concerts or you shoot up gay nightclubs, that, that those would be events. They weren't. You, sh you shoot ahead and try to kill members of Congress and that that would prompt them to action. But what seems truly different this time is the sustaining power of the students to keep this at the forefront of the discussion and the debate. Yeah, I've, I've heard last night at dinner someone came up to me. It happens every day. There are people who come up and say they messed with the wrong school, they messed with the wrong community. These student survivors are not going to just let this go. And, and I, it, you've seen it in the way that they've taken action already. You've seen it in the way that they've inspired action by others. Uh, we had eight of these students up in Washington last week uh, who met with dozens of members of the House and Senate. They were clear. They were passionate. They're leaders, and that's th that is the difference. Jim, these are kids who grew up post Columbine. Th they're the active shooter generation. Every year, from the moment they started kindergarten, they had training for active shooters, and then. Despite all of that, this happened in their school. 17 members of their school community were killed, and they're not going to stop until there's change. We need to listen to them. We need to amplify their voices. They're the ones who are leading this. We can't, members of Congress, members of the media, can't just go back to the, the same old analysis of how things work and the NRA has power. It's nonsense. Do, it's expand different on that. now. Talk, talk about what, Why do you think it's different? Because you were, you were saying that, that members of the media, myself sometimes included, get into the analysis of it. Does it have 60 votes to pass? Will this congressman flip on this issue? Those types of things. And the, yeah. the, the sausage making. You're saying we're, we're looking at the granular. We need to look at the bigger picture. I, I'm saying right now the issue for more and more people because of these student leaders is should, should people be safe in the public? Should moms and dads who send their kids off to school in the morning feel confident that their kids will come home in the afternoon the answer to those questions is, of course, and if there's someone standing in the way of taking action to help ensure that, they're going to get rolled over. It may not happen today, but it is, it's absolutely going to happen. That is, that really is different this time. I'm trying to liken it to another time. I mean, the obvious p parallel is to be thinking about the anti-war movement during the 60s with yeah. the Vietnam War. I, is that probably the closest parallel you could, you could I, think look, to draw? Yeah. I think I think this is I think this is in many ways akin to that. I mean, th these are look at these kids at Stoneman Douglas. They it, I mean if you really want to make the direct comparison, they're they're not going to sit by and let the fact that their friends were killed 
uh, just become normal. That's, I mean, in Vietnam, that when, when the anti-war movement picked up, it was because people saw their friends and their friends' brothers uh, being killed. That's what prompted action. When, we, when these kids were up in D.C., they met with John Lewis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are all these people who are trying to attack these kids and, and say, oh, these, we shouldn't listen to students. These, they're grieving kids. Now's not the time for them. We need adults here. Well, John Lewis was about their age, right about their age, when, when he helped to lead this massive movement for change, for, for uh, civil rights and voting rights. And, and it was, and watching him with these kids was like passing the torch. He told them what it's like to stand up to people in power. He told them that if they stick with this, they can succeed. They heard that, these students know that, that's what's happening now. Congressman Ted Deutsch, we got one more break and then we'll come back and continue this discussion.